the Asahi Shimbun. They came out this week with a pretty directly worded, um, you know, editorial saying, okay, enough already. Um, we do realize that that not only will athletes and Olympic participants be putting their lives in danger coming to Japan for the Olympics in July. I mean, that's absolutely clear. It's absolutely clear that Tokyo will not be anywhere near vaccinated, that COVID will still be out of control. And uh, it'll be dangerous both for and will will um, just just statistically, uh, whether it's one person, whether it's five people, whether it's 50 people, um, given the numbers of people coming to the Olympics um, and the impossibility of adequately quarantining um, or, or, or controlling the behavior of the athletes and, and the teams that are coming here, as well as the general population. It's absolutely clear it's going to result in more cases and more cases is absolutely clearly going to result in more deaths. And uh you know, um, it seems at the moment nobody wants to make the call. The rumor is that the, the, the Japanese government doesn't want to make the call because the IOC will then claim compensation uh, and they're afraid of, of, of having to spend extra money on this. So they're, they're waiting for the IOC to make the call. And the IOC is making the call because if the, is, wait, is waiting because they want the Japanese government to make the call so that they can get paid out. So the result is no one's making the call. And it's basically between... Um, people who are in it only for the money, not for the actual public health thing, and they're both putting creating a situation that is unquestionably going to result in athletes and residents of Tokyo getting sick, and some of them are going to die. And um, you know, Asahi's pointing out um, the uh, the idea of there being an adequate, you know, there, there being a tolerable death toll uh, to hosting the Olympics <laughs> from disease is kind of ridiculous, which it is. Um, and, and again, if, if the population here was going to be vaccinated, if it was possible to actually isolate the, the, the village and so on, and uh, I could see it being possible maybe six months after if they did a crazy vaccination campaign or something like that, but, but that's not what the situation is going to be, and it's 100% clear. And as it is, if it goes ahead, it is going to be impossible for it not to result in the deaths of athletes and the deaths of our additional deaths above uh the what would happen otherwise of people in, in tokyo and other hosting areas so yeah asahi's saying um this is bs somebody somebody has to call uncle on this um right now they're just playing chicken over money um and, and nobody involved in this is from a medical or a public health perspective is made nobody in making the decision about the can to to pull the cancellation um, is is representative of a health public health perspective or an athlete health perspective um so yeah yeah they're, they're saying the correct thing here Asahi Shimbun. so you know, i agree you know it's unfortunately i mean someone has to say it tokyo is not ready to host the olympics they can host the olympics we have all the we i mean we have the facilities and everything they could host them in front of no no participant you know in front of no spectators but fact is it's going to result in extra people getting sick which means extra people are going to die and the idea that that makes any sense at any time um is ridiculous so yeah yeah i again speaking truth unfortunately and to add to everything of course from today we have uh, a new state of emergency um, which was declared today for uh, Tokyo and surrounding prefectures, I believe, as well as Osaka. In fact, it might just be Tokyo, actually, uh, but also uh, Hyogo Prefecture, Okinawa Prefecture, and Osaka Prefecture. If I've, have I got that right? Was that for Okinawa as well? So here's a list of all the, the, the places which are going to be closed down for the, for the state of emergency in Tokyo. Essentially, what they've come to the conclusion, uh, based on contact tracing and data that they have, is that essentially alcohol is the main, seen as the main culprit. Where you know the, the main events of traceable clusters, where many people have caught COVID nineteen in Tokyo, have been events accompanied by alcohol, either parties, farewell parties at you know Ginza clubs, or even just sort of hanging out. But wherever there've been traceable clusters, they've often been accompanied with uh, alcohol-related get-togethers. So the government sort of has said. Uh, all restaurants or all uh, bars and places that serve alcohol will need to close. Uh, if you stop serving alcohol, you can remain open, but you have to close by 8 p.m. So they're sort of cracking down basically on alcohol. Um, and, and they're also talking about uh, how a lot of students have been buying alcohol from, particularly with all the bars closing at 8 o'clock, they've been buying alcohol from convenience stores and just drinking on the streets. Uh, funny seeing people crouching uh, like Tochigi Yankees talking about, yeah, I'm going to get drunk. And uh, sort of 
basically creating like a sort of moral panic atmosphere that the government's decided and NHK is fully cooperating with and cracking down that the scourge that must be addressed. It's almost like they're not interested in the COVID-19 so much as just uh, public alcohol consumption. All of a sudden, after all of this time, is now a concern in Japan. So they're cracking down on that primarily. Um, so yeah, they've got a list based on uh, the, the size of facilities and so on. They've talked about how they will uh, be asking places to close, which will include game centers, shopping centers, planetariums, large-scale sort of uh, department stores, zoos, um, parks. They're actually asking parks to close, places that can be large places where uh, lots of people can uh, get together, as well as restaurants, as well as places that uh, allow karaoke or serve alcohol will all need to shut down. Um, so yeah, they're actually um, doing a lot and they're allowing certain other places, for example, that take appropriate measures to remain open. Uh, but for shorter hours, for schools, they are encouraging people to go to online classes, but they're allowing schools to remain. In fact, the guidance actually in um, one place i believe osaka was talking about how yes they want students as much as possible to do classes online and remotely but to everyone to come to school to have school lunches in the cafeteria together kind of does make sense to, to the extent that there are impoverished families and working families if you if you don't let the kids um you know go to eat at school then parents have to take time off work to look after the kids and feed them at home um, but you could say that the whole aim or the whole goal of having them study online and, and remotely to avoid them, you know, giving coronavirus to each other, you, you're, you're sort of undermining the benefits of that by having them go in. The other thing, of course, is that school lunches in Japan are a, a major leveler against poverty and so on as well. So kind of complicated there. A bunch of other silliness, but that's the main drive of the um, of the. Um, COVID uh, emergency. There's a final aspect of this I'll talk about at the end of the night, but yes, that's what's going on with that. With it. Yeah. This is just a story again about how people are, um, how the government's just more or less, yes, uh, talking about how the crackdown on people drinking in the street is kind of, uh, <laughs> people are pushing back again, mostly. Again, Japan's got a kind of a closeted alcoholic culture the idea of alcoholism as an actual disease that people struggle with isn't really as acknowledged here as it is in other places um and and i suppose that banning uh, alcohol consumption in many places is going to push that to the fore.